Hello, YouTube. Hello, uh, world. Uh, my name is Michael, and uh, this is One Sky Astrology. This is our dialogue series, and my guest today is sidereal astrologer Maria Schumacher of, uh, yeah, hi, Venus 13. That's Venus-13. I'll put it up on the screen, venus-13.com. Uh, many of you will know her from her daily contributions, very valuable contributions on radical astrology. I'm delighted to uh, have you as my uh, as my partner in conversation. I'm a guest on my channel. Maria, would you would you introduce yourself to people? Okay. Yeah. How would Hi, you people. describe your work or your yourself? <laughs> okay. So I am a a uh, sidereal astro among other things i am a, a sidereal astrologer i read the true sky right the sky as it is right now if you have a telescope and eyes you can look up and see you know exactly what everybody else sees and that's what i read right right, right, uh, right. and it's that differs from mainstream astrology pretty much all forms except perhaps chinese i think they kind of have it right but anyway um so I write a daily astrology report, whereas I, I look at the chart of the real sky and then I kind of tell the story of the day as I see it. So um, I post that on Radical Astrology on Facebook and Cosmic Reflections on Facebook. And um, I have a little website called Venus-13 where I've, uh, it's, it's new. And I'm nervous about it in case you can't tell. It's just it's a very new venture for me yeah, because yeah, I'm kind yeah. of putting putting my is, offering it's... my experience and knowledge and some services related to um, my 25 and then some years as a practicing Wiccan. Mm. And of course, my study of astrology and other esoteric practices so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i like to say i don't have any answers i'm not an answer girl and i don't pretend to really know anything but mm -hmm. i can maybe help you in your quest to know stuff and we can help each other in the process so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's great i i i, I always look askew at uh, astrology that claims to know everything you know i i think good astrology it raises questions if it's good astrology it'll raise the right questions and this can lead to healing you know but um it's a uh, it's good i think that's a great foundation and i love i love your approach would you mind saying for maybe people who are curious what what else do you do you said uh you mentioned that you uh oh uh, by day i'm an interior designer <laughs> all right all right <laughs> yeah so um i i'm i'm really just i'm really just starting to sort of put myself out in the world in 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 that more esoteric capacity just marry mm -hmm. all of the facets of myself and go here you are world here's here's everything i have to offer if somebody finds something useful please contact me yeah, it's brave. It's brave. And there's there's a lot of uh, resistance to it. Uh, you know, we're, we're not we're not too far removed from a time where people used to get in trouble for you <laughs> know, expressing yeah. that they they had these sort of ideas. And I think that runs uh, maybe through through the spiritual fabric, uh, maybe through the collective consciousness, you could say, maybe through. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. And, and yet, I mean, I, I've noticed it. I'm, I am a big believer in as above, so below. Mm -hmm. That is to say that if I'm feeling it, a lot of other people are feeling it too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. what, what kind of goes on in here can represent a larger macrocosm. So right, right. if if I've been if I had been sensing that need for a spiritual alternative, mm -hmm. right? And I was born in 1968. Right. So Wicca was very much witchcraft, Wicca, and a lot mm -hmm. of esoteric mm -hmm. practices were very mm -hmm. much in the closet and demonized, literally demonized. Yeah. As as I was growing up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um and and it, and it just, you know, the older, the older I got and the more life experience I had, the more I realized that 
the container that they had put God and Jesus in right. was not big enough. That's, that's and that's well all I'll say said. about that's that. Well it's not said. that there wasn't a God. It's not that there wasn't a Jesus. It's just that the way that it's the way that it's contained within mm. these mainstream religions right. is not big enough. And I sought for something more. And so mm-hmm. since mm-hmm. I did, I figured that there are other people who also are, you know, and and I'm here as my own little, I don't know, guide gateway. <sighs> Somebody, no, you're just you, so you're offering. You get into, yeah. yeah, no, you're offering what you have, your skills, your resources, and in 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 an offering of of service. It's it's beautiful and it's brave, and I I want to applaud you for for taking those steps. Um, yeah, that maybe uh maybe maybe we could do a whole other conversation on. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we really could. We really we could. I'm, I'm sitting here going, no, no, no. This is not what we're talking about today. Let's go to a right, stop. right, because right. I could, because, right. Because this is not. This is not precisely what we're talking about today. Yeah. Although it's all a little bit related, we got together today to talk about this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Yes. It's coming up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So. Since a picture is worth a thousand words, I want to put that 3D view up on the screen just for everybody, just for a minute, uh, so that everybody can kind of get a sense of what we're talking about. And let's see. Okay. So, and there we are with uh, Jupiter and Uranus on the Aries-Taurus cusp. And this happens uh, about two two weeks from now, Maria? It's the 22nd. 22nd? April 22nd, I think. Is it? I thought it was the, I thought, I thought it was the 20th. That's it. Uh, it could, you could be. <laughs> we don't even know. Let's, let's make let's sure, see, shall we? I have I, the chart. I have the chart up. We're not even going to edit this out. We're, we're not even going to pretend like, like we knew. We have to see. 20th. It okay. is 20th April. So, but about two weeks, about two weeks. Yeah. Um, and I, and I just want to stop sharing my screen for now. But just to say, that's the visual representation. We've got a lot of activity in Pisces. For people who have been following the sky, it's Pisces season and Pisces is packed. There's uh, it's been eclipses in Pisces. But um, why did you want to talk about, because I approached you and I said, um, hey, come talk on you. <laughs> And what is it that that we should talk about? And you said Jupiter Uranus conjunction with no hesitation. Why? Like, let's start with just what is it to you? Okay. Well, for, first of all, part of the why was I don't I do not think it's getting enough press. I think the eclipse mm. is just overshadowing mm. what is I think an equally momentous event. I mean, these two oh, yeah. do not conjoin mm-hmm. very often. No, no, they don't. And the other reason why I wanted to talk about this is because the press that it is getting is fear mongering. And it Mm -hmm. upset me because Mm -hmm. I think that this, this conjunction really, when, when seen from a true sky perspective is anything but scary, anything but scary. I mean, this, this is Mm -hmm. such a benefic potential and that's the, the word potential is was I, is what I like to say about astrology, right? That mm-hmm. that astrology, the best astrologers don't tell you what's going to happen. They offer potentials. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, there's a potential in the sky for today for this, and there's a potential in the sky today for that. Right, like flows of energy, you can kind of you can kind of catch and and ride, uh, like opportunities. What is what does this represent to you? Jupiter, I mean, we'll get into that, I'm sure, but just in a nutshell, what's the thumbnail sketch of it? Brainstorm. Brainstorm. If Brainstorm. you had to put it up in yeah. two, yeah. In, yeah, creative ideas, right. new thinking, yeah. new ideas, yeah. brainstorm, imagining yeah. a world that is better than we ever thought possible. Right. 
Right. Stepping yeah. outside the known, the bounds of the, um, even yeah. the, the world, the world, sure. Yes. Yes. Of everything we're told, everything that we've been programmed with, everything that mm. we limit ourselves with. I mean, yeah. and this is on, again, a micro and a macro level. Sure. Yeah. But to dream differently, to think about things differently and to bring to bring that down to earth, to be able to ground it. Um, Beautifully said. Which, which, hey, which is Michael. a big feature of the eclipse that we just went through. Yeah. 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 Let's um let's take a few minutes and just do a one oh one here, like what is Uranus, uh, yeah. what is Jupiter, what is Aries, what is Taurus? Yeah. And you say one one oh one, like break it down, like just yeah. Let's 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 do, let's do. And c- can we have that sky map back yeah, there? With yeah, just... we can yeah, we can talk about it while we look at it. That's if excellent. You, if you That's tell us good. about Jupiter, I'll tell us about Uncle Dave. Okay, cool, cool. We can break it down like that. Wait. I love that. I love that. Okay, and are you, Back you up. should be seeing that. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, this this is the this is the sky map. We have almost everything on this side. The only thing that we're not seeing as far as major planets go, and I include Pluto and Eris, always include Pluto and Eris in my calculations of major planets. Um, we have a couple other we have a couple other uh figures there's Ceres in Sagittarius and, and and if we get into that we'll get into that but she makes a nice uh trine mm-hmm. uh trine a grand trine actually with uh, black moon Lilith in Leo and then the moon in Virgo and south node so we've got a, a just about a full moon that day too right um yeah that would be let's see pisces aries cause this uh yeah approaching fullness absolutely so cool so um yeah uranus and jupiter on the aries taurus cusp if you would like to break this down on a point by point basis where would you where would you like to start would you like to start with aries taurus i I think the back i think so yeah the set the stage um well, I I think of Aries Taurus as a as a as Aries as being very primal, very much about adventure, very much about exploration, and uh, I think of Aries as as brave but blunt, uh, kind of crude, uh, forceful at times, but but it gets things done, and, it, and once it gets an idea and an impulse, it it moves forward towards it. That's kind of what Aries does. I think of Taurus. And Aries is Martian, so when we think of Aries, we can think of resonance with those Martian qualities, many of which I, I just mentioned. Taurus is resonant with Venus, so you get a much more refined and delicate sense of, uh, you know, what's what's happening there. And 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 Taurus is patient; it stabilizes things. And an action of Taurus is it stabilizes, it grounds. Um. Fairies is like a, a rolling stone kind of lifestyle. It gathers no moss. You know, Taurus has a nice home. Taurus, Taurus has nice things in its home. And uh I'd I'd say I'd say that um, you know, Aries acts on instinct and it and it often does it pretty selfishly. Uh while Taurus is where we develop values and ethics. So so in Aries, we'll just get an impulse and we'll and we'll start acting on it. But in Taurus, it's much more inward looking. And when we get an impulse, it gets run through a, a, a different, a different circuit, a different loop. And we start to think, how will this affect other people? Do I really need to do this? It's where does this, you know, what are the repercussions of this? Certainly. In Aries, very little concern for repercussions, for better mm-hmm. I I also further to that, I also think of Taurus as very I, I think of both Aries and Taurus as fairly simple isn't the exactly the right word but Mm. the energy of one and the energy of two right the first house the i am Mm. that's aries aries associated with that first house the i am the singular the discovering the the um yes that oh 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 i am i am this i am that i am the other and then the then the i i want i want i want i want i want i want Right, right. And then Taurus, we get into the, okay, we start actually to question a little more. Like, do I, do I want this? 
do I like this? How do I value this thing? So I've, I've started my little exploration into the world and now I have the power of two. Yeah. Right. Do I, do I like it? Do I not? Mm-hmm. Do I value it? Do I not? That's great. That's really great. So this is a very considerate, and it's con- it's con- it's a considerate point. This cusp, and it, and what it's considering is more like basic primal stuff. And when I, mm-hmm. when I say basic, I want to mirror the sentiment you just shared, which we're not talking about basic in any derogatory way. Like no. oh, Aries, Aries people aren't basic. Aries people aren't anything uh, that the you know, accept whatever they have in Aries. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, a, a motion and activated and more driven energy. And and the Taurus energy is more inward and, and considerate. Um, well, and, and it is also... very, I, I am, it's very, I am. And I think of Taurus, if I had to put a verb to I am, it would be, could be, I have, but it could be. A... I think I am innocent. I'm there, there's a, there's a great innocence to Aries. Yeah, and yeah, in I a way, you know, that's a yeah. great way of thinking about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really untroubled by a lot of the stuff that gets piled onto us as we grow. We, we can, in Aries, we can kind of return to that one state, right? You got to move on. You just right. got to move through it. Yeah, Aries yeah. is more in the moment, I think, than any other sign, and I think. I mean, you can bring your bring your Pisces, your practiced meditation, Pisces, you know, and like Aries is just there, like these people are just there. So it's it's not to say anything basic, but it is. It's more. It's not as complex as some of the other archetypes. They're, it's mm-hmm. very raw. We're dealing with just the very first level primordial stuff of perception and reaction. So um, I think that's important to understand about Aries Taurus. The simpler we can keep it, the more we'll resonate with this. Yeah. And then if you want to talk about Uranus, Uncle, uh, what's Uncle Dave? Uncle Dave. Uncle so crazy I, Uncle yeah. Dave. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Just, this is welcome to Maria astrology, right? This is, this is, <laughs> this is so me. So I had, I literally had a dream one night where the planet Uranus came to me and said, Uranus, dear Uncle U, likes to be called Dave, as in David, as in King David of Judea. And then it was like, what the what, what, you know, where did that come from? Right, right, but, right, right. but it, you know, it, it, it's funny taking the name, what's in a name, take the name from Uranus mm-hmm. to Dave. And suddenly it neutralizes all of the nasty, scary shit that has been piled on top of Uranus mm, and, and does sort of suggest that more accessible, that more, that more easygoing, that more, yeah, yeah just here, yeah. hold my beer. I want to try, you know, I want to try tying balloons to a lawn chair. Let's see what happens. That's <sighs> right. There. Exactly. <laughs> and so that, massively intelligent but uranus is also the guy that was like why can't we have world peace Mm. what why not come on just want peace Mm. and then we'll figure out a way to make it happen right right that's where you want your uranus because he's got that super creative hyper intelligent untethered (laughs) mind Right. Yeah, it's also what's really. what scares people about it, but only because mm-hmm. they're scared of that access that that in themselves, I think. Mm, it we're is, we're yeah, scared of our mad genius. Yeah, it's deeper and it's it's not hinged to logic. It's not right. And that scares a lot of people. Yeah, especially today. So so yeah, crazy, crazy Uncle Dave. Um we have we have uh crazy Uncle Dave. And uh, and big big poppy is that is that Jupiter? <laughs> Jupiter. Big poppy, yeah. That's a, yeah. that's sometimes what I call Jupiter, just because yeah. he's everybody's granddad, right? He's, yeah, yeah, the guy. What that's do you cool. have to say? Tell us about Jupiter. Tell you about Jupiter. Wow. Tell us about well, Jupiter. Jupiter's. Man, Jupiter's. Um, Oh, Jupiter is one of the tougher planets to really get your get your uh, get your head around, if you ask me, because it's 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 it, the nature of Jupiter is very broad, very expansive, very all inclusive, very 
idealistic and dreamy. That's one thing I think uh, Jupiter and Uranus share. The, the, the combination of planets, it's, they both dream big. They're idealists. They aren't limited by how things are, and they aren't limited by how things might could be. They're dreamers. They're, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and they're both humanitarian, you know, just kind of while I'm taking this tangent onto the subject of uh, their similarities. But Jupiter is... Uh, in a word, I think if you could if you could look at Jupiter in one concept, it's expansion. Jupiter mm -hmm. expands things um, to the point that the really the shadow side of Jupiter is he goes too far. You know, the whole way from top to bottom, from from growth and abundance and uh, and yield and um, and uh, and profit, all these Jupiterian words, uh, expansion. You know, expansion of of wealth and assets. Jupiter, a wealth ruler, but uh, the shadow side of Jupiter is he's 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 going too far, and in harsh aspect, he he often pushes things too far. You often see a, Ju a Jupiter opposition, um, just yeah, too much of something, a little too much. And um, I think I think of Jupiter as uh, being 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 for the greater benefit. Um, the motivations of Jupiter processes are generally good. Mm -hmm. um, and not in the way that like it's all good, but Jupiter and and Uranus are decidedly humanitarian, where where yeah. where a lot of celestial forces, and the further out you get, um the further from humanitarian you get, I'd like to say Uranus is kind of the last humanitarian as you, as you get out. Cause Saturn's not overly humanitarian. He has his way of being humanitarian, but in the end, I don't think Saturn like Uranus cares about personal feelings where Jupiter has a warmth as a, as a Jupiter has a concern. So this will balance, this will balance some of the yeah. like chaotic. I mean, I know you're going to get to, Uranus and some of the qualities of Uranus that might be disruptive or mm -hmm. produce anxiety. And Jupiter, I think, will soften that. Jupiter softens that because he's good, because he does care about feelings and he has a warmth and he just wants things to be for the like best possible outcome. He, for want, he, wants, he wants things to be happy. Jupiter yeah. has an optimism. That's that's the emotion behind it. And again, you know, if, if we're going to go back to Uranus, he too can take things too far. Yeah. But that is yeah. because yeah. he's experimental in nature. He wants to see where the boundaries are. Yeah. That's like yeah. his yeah. literal job is to push boundaries. Yeah. And Disruptive. to and to break them. Break right. Them, right. Because it's because it breaks them. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's where we get innovation. That's where we yeah. get, that's where we get uh, being not limited by the things that may have limited us. That's so, where we get growth. I mean, growth is literally breaking. You start by breaking the shell of your egg and then you break yeah. through ground and then you're yeah. constantly breaking your structure to grow from it. So it's, that's just straight yeah. up growth. Brilliant. And in, in, in a way, Aries is, I mean, Mars will always rule growth. Um, and um kind of original growth where Pluto rules regeneration, Mars rules just generation, very, very generative energy. Um, and Jupiter expands, grows, we can say those are synonyms. And uh, Uranus is is kind of that insightful, insightful, edgy, uh, leaning a little further than they tell you you should lean just to see what happens. So we have- Jupiter might be the, or I'm sorry, Uranus might be the mutation. <laughs> Oh. Uranus does mutate. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool. So, oh. so we're starting to put a picture together. We're putting a picture together of like some some archetypal energies. Um, yeah. What what else does Jupiter do? He does he does Jupiter does the bless personal development and also spiritual development. And and I and I and I, I think when I say personal development, I don't mean like inner, inner, like psychological, I'd put that in the spiritual category. When I say personal development, I mean, like, make sure you have uh, food, make sure you have a house, make sure you have yeah. income coming in to satisfy the needs of a healthy life. And That's so it. Well, you know, Jupiter is associated with the ninth house, which mm -hmm. is like philosophy and expanded concepts. And so, I mean, he knows that 
a human being has to have a, a feeling of security, a strong feeling of physical true. security before it can explore those larger concepts. True. So true. he wants to bestow that on us. It's like, no, no, no. You, look, you're fed, you're comfy, you're housed, you're good. Yeah. You know, yeah. now it's very tor out. Torian too. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. So that's the security. So again, very Torian. It's, security yeah. is very Torian, which again, Jupiter coming into that conjunct Uranus at this time. It's just, once again, benefic, benefic. Right. We could also say about Jupiter that he is optimistic. I think he's oh, yeah. of all the planets, yeah. of all the, he's of the biggest planets. optimist out mm -hmm. there. Agreed. Biggest optimist, biggest hopeful dreamer. It's like his expansive, uh, it's like his expansive nature leads to that uh, kind of uh, sense, sense of humor but also uh, beyond like joy and the, and the ability to express and in, inspire mirth in people, just a sense that like, I mean, honestly, like if you get knocked down 10 times, pick yourself up 11, like just, yeah. I mean, it's, the, it's just that an optimism, a, a buoyancy, a, a keep going kind mm -hmm. of, uh, of attitude. Jupiter is always, is always wherever you find Jupiter, you'll you'll find optimism. I agree with you completely. Jupiter also, at, you know, and Uranus too, and and this is where I think people get a little scared if if you lean too heavily into these qualities. Jupiter also has something to do with law. Law, and I don't mean like mm. law in a temporal sense, but like right. but like cosmic right. law. Right, right. So, so not, not, not man-made law, which, which generally right. speaking, is Saturn's territory. But, exactly. But, but natural law, how things right. are before you put right. the pay, the the crime and the penalty on paper and make a social code. Saturn, gravity, uh, cause and effect, the golden rule. This is Jupiter's territory, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jupiter's territory, and Uranus being the you know the the pusher of those sort of boundaries yeah. you know he's, he's going to test that so yeah. i i think that it can be a little scary if you if in your head you lean too far into that aspect like, oh the natural law is going to be upended and it's oh, you know earthquakes yeah. volcanoes and fires mm. and ragnarok and it's like mm. you know okay maybe yeah but it's not just for the sake of destruction it's also oh, yeah. for every Every law, I think, and, and I think Jupiter also says this because he's associated with that ninth house kind of higher thinking. Mm. Every law does need to be tested. Sure, sure. Time. If it's if you test a law and the law doesn't hold, is it a law? Yeah. So if, if Jupiter and the ninth house are correlate with natural law, these are things that need to hold mm -hmm. gravity cause and effect um yeah you know it's not we're not in uh overly like negotiable territory there but but it's um quite the opposite with jupiter so yeah that's an interesting take on law we think of law as this i mean maybe not nah, not arbitrary that's that's a little too that leans a little too left that's a little anarchic thing to say all laws are arbitrary no 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 laws can be good and hold society together and be very important as a Yes, this is strength of the social fabric is is a, a good code of law that's fair. And that's important, but that comes after. That kind that's like that comes after. So so Jupiter is ruling truth, and Uranus is yeah. very truthy, and and testing that. Testing Uranus too, testing truthy, too, but also testing it. And, and Uranus, testing, I'd say yeah. test. Oh oh. <laughs> You, we may be saying the same thing at the same time. Yeah. That'd be cool. Why don't you go it, ahead? You know, te testing it for the sake of getting the most benefit out of it. That's what I was right? going to say. His motivation for pushing too far is to see, like, well, does this hold? Is it true? Can we? Because Uranus, let's let's you know, if we're going to classify planets as malefic and, and like having a, a harsh nature, or benefic, having like a and, and, and creating ease and and uplift and, and a beautiful nature, Jupiter and Uranus, I would say, are both benefics, but Uranus is a difficult benefic. 
Jupiter is a little bit easier benefic, but I say Uranus is benefic. It's difficult because he brings change, disruption, throws a sort of monkey wrench into the gears of whatever's happening. You tend to be very rebellious, but for that deeper good purpose, for yeah. that te integrity test, it's like uh, yeah. integrity check. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, just because you don't like the results of something he does or how he goes about something doesn't mean he's not benefic. Mm, that's true that's true right it's 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 sometimes we are uranus can also represent the areas where we are short-sighted mm, yeah i often and, find people look back on your and i'm one of them i often find people look back on uranus processes later and in retrospect they're like whoa that was really good for me but at the time i was like get me out of here you know that was terrible yeah yeah because so, we're just yeah. we're busy and the, jupiter can be the same thing too he can he can also be like no 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 you're not expanding enough and right, it's right. it's all you know depending on how much we're resisting some yeah. things that, that seem like punishment to us because yeah. we're not quite tuned in we're not evolved there are not yeah. punishment at all it's just they seem that way because we're so in resistance Oh, sure. The, the planets will always be conduits of, of kind of, how do you say, like universal energy that, and that universal energy is outside of time and space, like a limit, like concepts and limits, like everything breaks down and, they, and, and, and then, and then somehow, you know, reality needs limits to organize. And the 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 planets being discrete things, I think, channel an incredible amount of of cosmic consciousness to us, and just according to their nature. Um, and 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 yeah, to that, I think, I think that that we've talked about we've talked we've talked about almost everything I I I think is important to understand about Jupiter and Uranus. Except I I'll turn the question to you. I have I have my own answer, so I'm not going to try and hide that or be be that. You know, ham-handed but but what do you think uranus's shadow side what do you think the 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 difficulty of uranus is i think that the 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 difficulty about uranus is insensitivity right i i think that too, too aloof yeah, yeah exactly um, just the feelings, a little yeah. a little too aloof and not the the not really giving a shit what the results are yeah i'm just here to yeah. test i'm just here to push I don't really care about what the effects of it are on people. Right, right. So Jupiter will balance that. Jup Jupiter brings and, in a very caring, yeah. So I yes, think that's good. But exactly. but you're right. You're absolutely right. And yeah. that's the shadow I mean, side of Uranus. Again, I, I hate to lean into his shadow side too much because everybody no. does. But no, it's, you know, it's okay. Yeah, you know, but he'll pushed. also encourage you to push your own boundaries. Like he's that crazy uncle. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't care if I'm disrupting Christmas dinner. He doesn't. He doesn't care. Right. Do not care if I'm disrupting Christmas dinner. I do not care if, if, you know, I might break your car because I'm wanting to test how far I can go, you know, how fast I can go around this rim. It's, sure, it's, it's, sure, that, sure. it's that kind of thing. Right. Um, that and makes him difficult to deal with. And, and, and this is an interesting thing you bring up because, because you said that uh, Uranus is uh is uh doesn't care about feelings and i agree 100 percent. uranus does not care who gets hurt in the process of change but um at the same time you said uranus is ruling like i mean uranus is correlate with the 11th house and humanitarian and things yes, exactly. so there's so there's a concern for the bigger picture, the greater benefit but it's very above it's very detached it's very aloof and impartial and right. I want to, I want right. to paint that picture because that gets difficult for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, That's when and, it's like you say, you often look back on Uranus transits going, oh my God, that was so beneficial. But as the individual is sitting here going, this hurts, this yeah. hurts, this hurts. Yeah. And Uranus yeah. is like, what? Uh, individual? Yeah. Uranus does. It's just, you know, it's, seen it before, yeah. No, so. yeah. No, no, really. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I want to tag on to that. I don't want to spend too much time on shadow sides, but I just want to say Uranus. One thing about Uranus and Aquarius is like to contrast it to Saturn and Capricorn, because we're talking about natural law versus uh, you know, human law. Mm -hmm. One thing about Capricorn 
is that it tends towards the conformist. It tends to be looking at other people and seeing, well, how are people doing? The Capricorns do great in Rome. So they're going to look and see what a Roman's doing, and they're going to do that thing. Now, yeah. Uranus and Aquarius, just like Capricorn and Saturn, is going to do a rebellious thing. And that might seem really like insightful or awakened and sometimes it is but the shadow side of Uranus is like this rebel without a cause right where it's just anti it's like it's only anti to the status quo and it doesn't it doesn't and Saturn and sorry Jupiter will help this too Exactly. That's just Jupiter what I was going to say. Is. Jupiter brings the cause. It does. Jupiter it does. brings that, you know, no, 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 Dave, we, we're working for man this time. Right. 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 And which, right. which Jupiter's not, or Uranus isn't working against him. Right. You know, he's just coming in and being like, all y'all need to do this different. Right. So the and two of them together, they bring a lot of vision. They bring a lot yeah. of insight. When you see, when you see this combination in natal charts, it's almost often like, uh, almost always uh, 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 very often big success stories um, or moderate success stories or just significant success stories. This is a success signature. So when we're thinking about like, what does this relate to in our own charts? Like what's in late Aries, what's in mid Libra, when, when, we're, when we're looking at the relationships that this is making, um, you know, this is conjunct by uh, by sign uh, in the constellation of, of Aries uh, and then with the sun, too, with my natal Chiron. So this, for me, is going to be a, a, like a resolution of past maybe nice. traumas or pains, a big healing uh, signature that that's how I would... Uh, you know, sort of not not be surprised if if the insight, the success, the you know, all these great qualities that we're talking about. It's like, well, does that mean we're all going to hit the lottery? Like, no, no, this is connected to my Chiron, which is a sort of offbeat comment, like way out there. So it, very important, very significant in what it reveals. But for each of us, I think this could be connected to a different kind of success or breakthrough, but always in when you see this combination, it's like, I mean, man, Big George idea. Washington, Lee Iacocca. Um, oh, it's such a I, list. It's such a list. Al Alan Turing, who invented the computer, uh, and then and then ARPANET, which was born in '69 when Jupiter and Uranus conjoined. So, and for people who don't know, I'm sorry, I'm getting obscure now. ARPANET was the predecessor to the internet came out of the Cold War in 60 uh in born in 1969 under a Jupiter Uranus conjunction uh and uh it's it's, it's amazing the chart of it but I want to say um that when Uranus conjunct the galactic center in uh in 1987 uh that which was really correlate with the birth of the modern internet uh in in by 1989 ARPANET had been decommissioned We'd, we'd all switch to TCP IP, um, the modern internet protocol, which is what the IP and TCP IP stands for. And that'll happen between like 83 and 89. And that's, that's the Uranus again in 87 passing galactic center. So we're seeing like that accentuation of technological Personal. development. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Personal ahead. note: I, I have it conjuncted my chart. I have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Oh, do you? Excellent. Yeah, I, I, Excellent. I was born. It was born in late 1968. Jupiter yeah. and Uranus are conjunct in my chart in Virgo, Beautiful. and I graduated high school in 1987. So, oh wow, wow! How when cool. when How Uranus cool. conjoined my when son conjoined. at the Galactic Center, yeah. Oh wow, wow, wow! Sure, I'm sure there's a lot there. If this were like a, if this were like a session, that we just that's a rabbit hole that's a deep one but we'll, we'll dive it one of these days but yeah oh, sure you know i wanted i wanted to to roll back into yeah. um what we were talking about with jupiter and uranus and resistance okay so right they're going to be coming conjunct 
they're going to conjoin at the cusp of Aries and Taurus. And we've got like nothing opposing them. We've got almost everybody else in Pisces. Yeah. Let's look so at the chart. Can we look yeah. at the 2D while, yeah. we're, while we're here? Yeah. Let's, let's move into that 2D chart. Cause we've got, we've got like no resistance now to those big ideas coming through. And again, with, with those two coming together in the very personal signs of Aries and Taurus, right? The one and the two, mm -hmm. the individual has a great opportunity to just dream big because all of, almost mm -hmm. all of the other planets are in the dream side. That's right. That's right. Pisces and dreaming big. Yeah. Sun, dreaming, sun releasing just moving resistance. Into, yeah being in flow. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiration. Yeah. Key, key Pisces thing, just to be inspired to take new steps with the combination of Pisces being inspired and Aries being empowered to take action mm -hmm. with the sun, just, uh, just on the edge here of, of Pisces, Aries and, uh, and and this sort of like big big blessing big success formation here. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's really I think the important thing is one that Aries usually demands some of our work. Like the success is not going to be like oh I've been waiting since 14 years ago for this conjunction and now I'm going to be successful. Like no it's it's a time to sort of detect where you know, individuals can lean in, you know, how we yes. can, how we can maximize. And one of the ways we can do that is, and this is, I got to kind of tease this apart, but I can, I can do it. This is a cluttered yeah. chart, but you see, whoa, you see, you see sun here uh -huh. in the last degree of Pisces, right on the yep. Pisces Aries cusp, very cuspy action. But what I want to focus on is sun's, um, square to pluto which is very close at mm. uh, zero degrees and so so for all of us sun just representing sort of how the collective consciousness is integrating this is reflecting a square to pluto from early capricorn which is new structures the Aries Capricorn, the Aries Capricorn square is like, and the square could be difficult to implement, but Pluto is like transformative new steps. Like this is a time to feel empowered and blessed to go in. Like you said, dream a world that has never been. Dream things that are stupidly impossible and don't be intimidated by their right. lack of grounding. And, you know, this is a time to... This is a time to succeed in ways that maybe we could only have dreamed of. Before. Yes. Literally. Literally. Yes. That that maybe we could only have dreamed of or, or couldn't even dream before because we had so many limits on what we thought possible. I you love know, the, that. Yeah. Those unconscious limits on our possibility are just gone with all that Pisces. I mean, look at right, we right. now have Mars, Neptune, Mercury, Venus, and the Sun all in Pisces. Yeah. Yeah. And right. more than any other planet, Uranus is ruling the subconscious, those yeah. kind of like, and Jupiter is, is, is tonifying and amplifying, yeah. amplifying and kind of smoothing the signal. So Jupiter's like pretty awesome like that. Right. But Uranus could be, there could be incredible movements from the subconscious. And I want to get into a formation. I was hoping we'd have time to yep. get into this. If you notice, um, we're making like a quintile yard to South Node and Galactic Center. Love this. Yeah, so me too. Much. Me too. Me too. This is important. Uh, why do you Why do you love it? Why don't you say something about the the quintiles okay. or yeah? Well, yeah, quintiles. Quintiles started becoming important for me a few months ago. I got I got led to like no put quintiles in there, mm -hmm. and I'm convinced it's all because of this aspect right? Okay. Like just got led to just quintiles be, a while because... ago. Because, because of this, because yes. Yes, yes. the way I sum up a quintile and a biquintile okay. is genius level creative energy. Yes. 
right? Yeah. If, if you can sum up a square as challenging energy and a trying to supportive energy, then quintiles mm -hmm. are, are creative in it, but at a genius level. Yeah. Very dynamic, very, yes. very powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Creative transformation, creative, uh, the power of a quintile is the power to take things to the next plateau, the next yes. step. Like yeah. way beyond, beyond. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and the here, and here's something in the collective chart mm -hmm. that we all can tap into mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's not like this is happening that day. This is going on now. The, the Uranus oh, yeah. is oh, yeah. the focus of that quintile yard right now has been for weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. getting those, those genius level downloads from the galactic center, yeah. you know, which is, you know the 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 gateway to everything, right? That um... sort of yeah, that's a great that's a great way to like the belly button of the of the galaxy. Sure, however you want to think of it, like that's, yeah, that's a pretty much with with all of that effusion wisdom right. and the you know galactic memory right, and right. and also galactic imagination. You know, every, yeah. it's like every potentiality, everything that has been and is going to be is contained within the galactic set. Right, and right. We've in, got the sun on this important cusp of Pisces Aries, this really, really dynamic cusp. And, yeah. we've, and we've got this really, really dynamic cusp of because when people talk about the galactic center, they're 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 correct. It's it's in a fucus, but they they I think it's a cusp. And there's that early yeah. Sag energy, that like yeah. bull out of the barn in the spring kind of energy that also like through I mean, it's such a juxtaposition as we could do a whole conversation on the nature of that cusp, but these cusps are activated, very dynamic activation. Yes. Well, it, but, and again, it's just because we're 13 signers, we need to mm -hmm. harp on a fucus a little bit because it would oh, be yeah. easy to just, to just oh, go yeah. the Sagittarius route. But I think it is important mm -hmm. to remember that there's that a serpent signal wisdom Yes. In there. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't mean to gloss it or imply that it wasn't yeah. important or yeah. Thank you. Thank you for emphasizing that. Um, and then very for... charged, very charged energies involved in all this, you know, yes. and the South node, the South node for, for, for people who know or, or don't is uh, connected with resources or um, not to leave it at that. It's very broad, but let's say resources from uh, prior lives from, before yeah. the bounds of this lifetime. So I agree that aspect of the South Node is is really key to this quintile yacht, right? To to the right now. The 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 component of the South Node that speaks to everything that we've experienced before. Yeah. As a collective. Yeah. You know, everything that we've experienced before, all of the tools that we have in our tool bag. And what of that is now going to move forward? How can we use all of that to reference something completely brand new that we never thought of? And some of it is right. just like, all right, well, we thought of that before, we thought of that before, we thought of that before, we, that before. Uh, we need yeah. something completely else. So mm -hmm. fortunately, we've got the galactic center with the fucus there, and then Uranus at that cusp of Aries that is just all about the new and the right the the new and the innocent and the I, I just I the quintile from Uranus to the South Node yeah. really really speaks of that return to innocence for me. Oh, that's beautiful in Virgo, very much so, very much yeah. so. So. I mean, liberation is a word that gets thrown around a lot, but Jupiter in Vedic astrology is called guru, the one who leads to liberation. And yeah. Uranus is certainly about throwing off the shackles, kind of all the shackles. But I mean, if you throw off all the shackles, are you, I mean, is there a difference between that state and the you know liberated state i don't know so i see right. i see this as being a very very much a freedom oriented influence authenticity i see them both as reflecting uh 
a need for authenticity. So these are things that yeah. we can do to kind of lean in, to kind of catch this wave, like the, yes. you know, right. It's like a tuning fork. Like we resonate with the energy and then, oh, we find, we find we're tapping into it. And we you know, it's like, if you take a step towards these vibrations, they will take a hundred steps towards you. Yeah. And um, when, when we're, when we're thinking about Jupiter and Uranus, you know, here and everything that we're talking about, I think we're thinking about authenticity to our highest self, to the truest ideals. I think we're, yep. I think we have innovative ideas, you know, I think innovative uh, dreams, even innovative, like visionary, just beyond, like it's, it's really next level when these two get together. There is a technological breakthrough thing. I mean, I think, um, I think, oh, I'm sorry for this pop. I, uh, I try not to, but um, there is, there is, it does make me smack my lips. There's, there could be technological breakthrough like the, like in uh, 69 when, when uh, ARPANET was, was created. It was literally, they linked the first computers together and to, you know, today oh, sure. we're, we're and, doing this. I mean, so and the, look at the magnificent benefit that has been. Yeah, sure. it has been used for some nefarious purposes. Sure. Like everything. I mean, you can use a hammer yeah, for nefarious purposes, but mostly you build things with it. That's true. I mean, from chipped flint tools, you have the potential to do harm. It just it's That's not it. it's not to say tools are bad. We can't yeah. make that we can't make that mistake. We can't say, right. you know, the technology is gonna be put back in the bag there's a lot of hype now about artificial intelligence, but we're we're that's the probably the third rabbit hole we're gonna have to avoid today. Yeah. Um I yeah. just want to say the idealism of Pisces, the idealism of all of this activity in Pisces, because Pisces as a backdrop infuses all those planets with idealism. It has never been more likely to be real <laughs> because yes. not all of Pisces idealism has a basis in reality. But now at this point, I think the Jupiter Uranus conjunction is a major blessing to like taking steps that we yeah. didn't know we could take and yeah. think we could take. We're afraid to take maybe, you know, um, I mean, the just bravery right of that, Aries. But, you yeah. Know. Right at that Taurus cusp with the South node in Virgo can just mm. pull all of those ideals there. Cause you know, yeah, Pisces can dream and dream and dream and dream, mm. but it's not often that Pisces has, the power, right, the, right. you know, the, it the needs outside power. It. Yeah, it needs, it needs outside, outside power. Po it and needs so outside out power. Yeah, so look at what's outside of Pisces. Brilliant, yeah. Pluto and yeah. Big Poppy and Dave. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. the huge, yeah. huge powerhouses of the chart. Saturn too. Those Aquarius. ideals yeah. into concrete Capricorn Taurus right. manifest reality trying down to the south node, right? I mean, it's just that's that's that yes that's why yeah. this is so cool because yeah. we can do things like world peace we can do it we can yeah, find that's a amazing way I, to that's so yeah. amazing yes and then and then and then you know i don't i don't i don't uh i don't think you're wrong in any way i think we could see major major steps taken in that direction pisces is is incredibly pacific um, yeah, it's it's you know I just came here to this uh, sort of dialogue from uh, scrolling the newsreel, you know, and all the all the Gaza. And oh, I'm so sorry. Council. No, it's okay. It's okay. As an astrologer, I stay on top of global news. Yeah, I do too. It's, it's a point of yeah. So 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 when you're talking about world peace, that's a stark juxtaposition to a conflict that's gone on for four thousand years plus, and. At the same time, there's more uh, realistic ceasefire talks, like the ones that are just yeah. coming up in Cairo that are that are happening right now than um, than have been in the last six months of this conflict. But so, I mean, that's that's so Uranus and Aries, isn't it? I've yeah, got to bring absolutely. All these conflicts to a head. Absolutely. I've got to bring up all of this. It's also all of the Pisces stuff that we can, you know, I've got to bring everything up. I've got to bring it all up to a head to see it. And we're going to fix this. We're going to fix this. Pisces is like religious yeah. idealism and yeah. Uranus and Aries. Uranus and Aries. 
when Uranus ingress to Aries, Notre Dame and that church in Brooklyn burned. Like Uranus in Aries doesn't care who gets hurt. He's just, if good people are going to get hurt, Uranus is like, yeah, you break a few eggs, you make an omelet, right? Yeah. But now with Jupiter and Uranus, the sun just entering Aries, transformed by Pluto, I think I think there is new directions. If we're if we're if we're continuing in the same old directions, I think we're missing the point. So I do too. And 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 also, and also I completely agree 100 percent with everything you've said. And think about where Jupiter's heading, mm. heading toward Aldebaran. Mm -hmm. yes, so in just Alpha a few Taurus, months, yeah. that big integrity test that Aldebaran brings with it. Yeah. You know, when yeah, yeah. so I when Jupiter moves away from Uranus, they're both in Taurus, and then we get the integrity test of Aldebaran. So yeah, I think that if we are not working, if we're if the actions we start taking right now are not in alignment mm -hmm. with that humanitarian ideal right. that we all have a taste of now because of this lineup. And sure, Jordan. sure. No, that's, a, that's a big theme. I think a lot of yeah. us are just realizing that we're all in this together because part of this awakening that's happening right now is, is coming into a higher states of consciousness and realizing like there's there's no there's no lone wolf. This will be a fourth rabbit hole, but there's no, you know, we're 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 wired for connection. We're yeah. wired for interdependence and interconnectivity that yeah. we're social creatures like you can't think that the john wayne approach to uh the new york city approach to get off my fucking sidewalk is, is that that's not that's not really like that's not really a lasting like that's not a sustainable long-term like human it's not endeavor. it's not no and the 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 you know pisces will bring the softness and hopefully aries will bring the the oomph to push through in, in brave new ways in good new ways that will reflect the values and the peace and the, and the, and the equality. That's a great Piscean trait. Everyone's equal in Pisces. Yeah. You know, you get the galactic center involved. Everyone's equal there too. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. So I, I think, I think we're about at an hour. Do you have anything that you feel is dangling or that you would like to like to Let bring me. attention to? I get my notes here. Yes, yes, I'm notes. My, my notes are hidden right now. You know what? No, we 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 hit it. We hit it. Yeah, that was we good. That is, that is, that's yeah. what's going on. I think we talked about it in good ways. I absolutely agree. I agree. That... We did talk about Uranus. He he passed the galactic center in um 87. 87. That's right. We talked about technological development uh, relative to that. I want to say that Uranus is a much slower moving planet. So when I say 83 to 89, I'm kind of looking at that. But in uh, 2019, Jupiter passed Galactic Center. And that was marked by a lot of people's movements, a lot of protests in 2019. If uh -huh. you remember, 2019 was the year of the dumpster fire. Because we hadn't got to 2020 yet, and people didn't know it was around the corner. But 2019 was marked by women in Iran protesting, indigenous peoples movement, the indigenous peoples march, the Hong Kong protests. And like, if you go to the Wikipedia of like people's movements in 2019, there are it's a it's a category, and there are 118 articles, mm -hmm. articles in that category. It was a time of social yeah. uprising, and that's. And and honestly, I think that we're going to see more of that this year, as, as everybody doing. ingresses into Taurus. I really do that yeah. social because yeah. again, we've gotten a taste of it now. We we I saw right. Right. that right. that that it you works. Know, you can change when things. we have leadership that is open to guidance from its people, and the people step up and say, "No, we we want you to work for policies that help people over there." All of a sudden, leadership works for policies that help people over there. So people over here can guide their leadership to do what is good for people in other places. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. We've gotten a little taste of it. Not as much as we want. No. Not as much as many of us want. Mm. But I, I, you know, honestly, that energy of no, we want to destroy everybody who doesn't think like us. Yes, yeah, right. 
is it's just kind of kind of last not. stage energy like we're kind of entering into a, a new a new kind of phase where that's that's yeah. losing its uh it's losing its, it's losing its juice and mostly because most of us want to live that aries kind of life like the fool card right yeah. i just well, i want to return to innocence yeah. where i can I just live my life and I got my wants, decide my needs. again Yep. Yeah, and decide exactly. again what I what I need, what I want, what's good for me, what do I want to experience, what do I want to be out there doing. And I want that for everybody too, so sure. that I can have that for myself, right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, may we all get it. May we all may we all achieve the the well, you know what, honestly. More, more likely, or more, 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 more reasonable blessing to close uh, this conversation down with would be just that, that that I wish that I hope for everybody that they're able to lean into the goodness and the, the potential for growth, healing, change, movement towards optimism, financial success. I mean, this could be any number of things, depending on how it interacts with people's individual charts and lives and i just hope for everybody that they're able to benefit that's it because benefiting it, it really is true that you living your best life and me living my best life mm -hmm. creates a pocket of that yeah, in the ra world. radiates too out yes. of that pocket it's like it's like kind yeah. it's like kind it's like when you're in line at the grocery store and someone like bumps into your card and then they and then they actually like say something like like really nice or like heartfelt there's a human moment there like it just changes just absolutely changes everything to be yeah. to be remembering that that those qualities those heartfelt and just That's right. to, together and and good qualities and and hopefully we'll all be able to to pick each other up um if if we see people around us that are sort of affected by this in less beneficial ways in some yeah. of the turbulent ways we can that's you know and that's also the the i'm sorry i'm good one more thing and then i promise i'll let us live one more thing go the, for it the jupiter conjoining uranus right now that it it doesn't always have to be we don't always have to be thinking humanitarian right we really can be acting on our own highest and best good. And mm -hmm. that yeah. ripples to the collective. Yeah. So we, we don't always have to be worried about what's happening to people in other places. We don't have mm -hmm. to always be worried That's about what's true. happening to other people. If yeah. we're raising our own selves up. Yeah. It's very really apropos to Pisces because I think Pisces tend to take the weight of the world on its shoulders and try to fix everything, want very much emotionally to fix everything, even though it might be very aware of this irrational yeah. it wants it wants to you know uh healthy Pisces does a very very peaceful, very good impulses. So yeah, yeah, keeping a healthy perspective on this, you know, may everyone, you know, benefit and prosper and and be uh and be healed. And yeah. uh I think this has been uh a beautiful, a beautiful dialogue. I thank you so much for for taking the time to oh. to be here and, and talk about all this. Thank you for inviting I was I'm honored to be on your show. Oh, bless you, bless you. Do you have anything you want to promote? Like any, uh, any? I, I, we didn't talk about this. I this want to promote Michael because more people need to benefit from this man's wisdom. I am here to tell you. Yes, Thank you, you are. You Thank are you. underrated and undervalued, and and that that would be my wish for the next year that yeah. more people just get the benefit of you. The Saturn on the seventh house is just slow, steady progress. I think people, people, people who approach things like me, um, just tend. I think they tend to let their quiet competence speak for them over time, rather than be like, "Hey, sail over here." And I and I appreciate I appreciate what you're saying um, because I I wish I wish that I could uh, like literally I just wish I could help more people. And I find this I find this incredibly beneficial work, incredibly healing work. So um anything you got going on, Venus hyphen thirteen, we'll we'll put it up again. Yep. Um, 
Yep. Venus-13.com. Check mm-hmm. it out. Check I, it out. I, I'm still growing it. I'm happy to have suggestions about how yeah. it could be improved or if people want to see more things. Yeah. Nice. 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 Okay. Read the dailies. I, I love it when people yeah, join radical dailies. astrology. What's up yeah. out there in the, in the, in the rest of the world. We don't know. Cause yeah. we're, we're on radical astrology on Facebook, which, which is, this is a very uh, inspiring community. It is. It is a, a very inspiring, a very loving community. People yeah. were just a bunch of people who are just star lovers, right? They just love to look up. So yeah. So, and so I have a little based. Patreon page if you wanted to tip. Yes, yes, yes. We'll put that up too. You send me a link. I'll put. I'll put. Yeah. Send me a link, and then in the in the okay. when I edit this, so, so we have a Patreon. Is that a Patreon link? Yep. Cool. Maria's so, daily charts. <laughs> excellent, excellent <laughs> work, excellent work. Yeah. So having ways to support you while you support the people. That's that's the flow. That's that's the way. That's the way energy flows. I love that. I think I'm going to close it down. So thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Uh, thank you, Maria, again. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Bless you all. See you next time.